Hello everyone, welcome to Chemazon Complete Chemistry. So in our today's video, we are going to understand one of the very important topics in stereochemistry that is called as types of strain in organic molecules. Now why this concept is important is, this is important for understanding the conformational analysis of the molecule. What is conformational analysis? Conformational analysis is for a molecule based on these type of strain, we do the energy analysis, which means we study the energy or potential energy of the molecules based on these types of strain and we will plot the curve and curve of energy versus the different rotation. That is nothing but conformational analysis. We will see in much detail in the next video. So basically there are three major types of strain. There are one or two more types of strain, which we will discuss later on. First is angle strain, it is also called as Bayer strain. Second is steric strain, it is also called as Van der Waals strain. And the third is torsion strain or sometimes it is called as torsional strain or it is also called as Pitzer strain. So you must know the alternate names as well because sometimes they ask the alternate names. They will not ask you directly what is steric strain, they might ask you what is Van der Waals strain. Okay, so you must know the alternate names as well. So before understanding the types of strain, let us first understand what are what is the e exact meaning of strain. So strain is nothing but it is increase in the molecular potential energy. So what is the meaning of this? More is the strain in the organic molecule. Its potential energy or we can say energy will increase. See for any system, when energy of the system increases, it eventually becomes unstable. System with more energy is unstable, system with lesser energy is stable. Now this strain or increasing potential energy can be due to electron repulsion that we will see it is uh, in two types of strain. One is the torsional strain and another is the steric strain. In both these strain, uh, the energy of the molecule, potential energy of the molecule increases because of the electronic repulsion or the strain can be due to deviation from the ideal geometry. Okay, what is the exact meaning that we will see deviation, the strain due to deviation in ideal geometry is seen in case of angle strain. Okay, so now let us one by one try to understand what is the meaning of this strain. So first one is angle strain. So what is angle strain? Angle strain is the strain due to expansion or compression of bond angles. So what is the meaning of that? In case of sp3 hybridized carbon, as you can see here, this is which molecule? This is CH4 or we can say it is methane. Okay, in methane hybridization is sp3. So the ideal bond angle in sp3 hybridization is 109 degree. 28 minutes or I can write it as 109.5 degrees. So deviation of the sp3 hybridized carbon from this ideal bond angle that is nothing but called as angle strain. The angle will deviate from the one exact value or the expected value 109.5. Compression means value is less than the expected value and expansion means the value is more than the expected value. Okay, so because of the either compression or expansion of bond angles, the energy will increase. Ener energy or potential energy of the molecule increase due to the angle change in the bond angle that is nothing but angle strain. So now let us try to understand the concept of angle strain in the cycloalkanes. Okay, what are cycloalkanes? Cycloalkanes are cyclic hydrocarbon what is the meaning of cyclic hydrocarbon as you can see here these are all closed ring structure cyclic means ring structure okay this is three carbon is called cyclopropane four carbon is called cyclobutane five carbon cyclic hydrocarbon is called cyclopentane and six carbon is called as cyclohexane so what is the ideal bond angle that we require for an sp3 hybridized carbon it is 109. 5 degree okay and in all these cases what is the hybridization of the carbon atom it is sp3 hybridized in all the molecules so the ideal angle should be 109.5 but in cyclopropane the bond angle is 60 
so we can see the deviation is how much 49 degree okay and as we increase the carbon atom that is from 3 to 4 4 we increase one carbon we will get five carbon ring and five carbon when we increase one carbon we will get a six carbon ring so here you can see the bond angle is 90 so how much is less so approx we want 109 so 109 minus 90 is how much 19 one nine. So here you can see deviation is less. So the angle strain in cyclobutane will be less. Okay. Similarly, in cyclopentane, it is even lesser than cyclobutane. And in cyclohexane, it is least. Okay. In the first three cases, you can see it is compression of the bond angles. Compression means the bond angle is less than 109.5. Okay. Compression means less than the ideal value. Uh, uh, and expansion means greater than 109.5 degree that we can see in cyclohexane. Okay, so the increase in the potential energy due to change in the bond angle from the ideal value is called as angle strain. So now let us see the next strain that is called as steric strain. Steric strain is the strain due to repulsive interaction when the atom approach each other too closely. Okay, this is called as Van der Waals strain as well. Why it is called as Van der Waals strain? Let us see that. First of all, steric strain means it is the repulsion between the electrons of atoms. Repulsion between the electrons of the bulky groups. Okay, it is mostly when two bulky groups are close to each other. Okay, and that is... Uh, that is, let's say here there is one methyl and another methyl group which are very close to each other. So the electrons of hydrogen and carbon, this entire methyl group will repel the another, uh, the electrons of the another methyl group which is very close to each other. Okay, that is called a steric strain. And why it is called a steric strain? Because why it is called as Van der Waals strain? Because this distance between the two groups is less than the sum of their Van der Waals radii. Okay, so there will be, uh, this is the van der Waal radii. Van der Waal radii means the distance between the center of the two atoms. If let's say I say this is A, this is also same bond CH. So this will also be A. Okay, if I do A plus A, that is 2A, this distance, okay, this distance, let's say it is B. So B is less than 2A. Okay, this distance between them is less than the sum of the two, uh, sum of the Van der Waal radii of the two atoms. That is why it is also called as Van der Waal strain. Okay, Van der Waal strain. That is the because of the bulky nature of the groups. Here it can here now it is methyl group. It can be a tertiary butyl group, isopropyl group, even more bulkier atoms, and the electron repulsion between the atoms of two groups which are very close to each other that is nothing but called as steric strain so in this space filling model you can see uh, how close these atoms are actually okay and because of this there is the strain or increase in the energy of the molecule that is nothing but called as steric strain so whenever two more bulky groups are close to each other there will be increase in the potential energy of the molecule that is nothing but called as steric strain. Okay, so now let us see the last one that is called as torsional strain. It is also called as eclipsing strain. Why? Because it is mostly seen in eclipsed conformation of the molecule. What is the meaning of eclipse conformation? Let's say I take the example of ethane. Ethane is CH3, CH3. Okay, let's say this atom is A and this is B. Okay, this is which conformation, which projection formula? This is Sawhorse projection formula. Okay, so this is A and this is B. So this front hydrogens, these three hydrogens of attached to carbon atom A, they are exactly in front of the hydrogens of the hydrogen that are attached to the back carbon B. Okay, that is why they are in the eclipsed conformation. What is the meaning of eclipsed conformation? 
same as that of we say lunar eclipse or solar eclipse that is one celestial body is in between the two celestial bodies or in front of uh, one celestial body similarly here we are talking about the atoms one atom is exactly in front of the other atom due to which what will happen this ch bond and this ch bond there will be repulsions okay this is because of the torsional strain is because of the repulsions between the electrons that are forming the bond electrons of the bonds okay that is let's say here there are these two electrons and these two electrons there will be repulsion this is nothing but called as torsional strain or eclipsing strain okay it is also defined as increase in the potential energy of the molecule increase in the potential energy of the molecule due to repulsion between electrons in bonds in steric strain what was the repulsion repulsion between the electron of the atoms okay electrons of the atoms here it is the repulsion between or electronic repulsion between the electron that are forming the bond that is why here it is written electron in bonds that do not share an atom share an atom means both these okay this front hydrogen let's say it is i mark it by this asterisk this hydrogen is attached to carbon a and this hydrogen let's say i mark it with star this is attached to a carbon b it means both are attached to different atoms they do not share an atom means they are not attached to same carbon atom so that is why it is called as uh, that is why it is called as eclipse strain uh, that is increase in the potential energy because of the repulsion between electron of the bond okay so let us understand with an example here you can see this ccl bond this ch bond and this ch bond and this ch bond they are in the eclipsed conformation that is this chlorine group is exactly in front of this chlorine group this hydrogen hydrogen are in front of the back hydrogen if i draw in uh, in newman projection formula it would look like this and it is in eclipsed conformation that is why it is called as eclipsing strain okay so these were the three types of strain so that's it for the today's video in the next video we will understand understand how to we actually calculate the energy of the uh, molecule in terms of number or quantitatively how we can say we cannot say less more that is not correct the correct scientific method for finding out the energy that is called a strain energy how do we calculate the strain energy of the molecule that we will see in the next video thank you so much